Madam Chair, my, my question is, in, in principle, more than any particular line here, and my concern with giving, I, I do understand the economic impact, obviously, and we know the, status, the status of our state, and as Senator Cassano said, Springfield is going to you know, get most of its revenue from Connecticut if we were not to pass with this bill. We get all that, and we've heard enough on this subject matter as far as the financial component is concerned. My concern is the consequences. Obviously, everybody's an adult. Everybody makes adult decisions. But along with the adult decisions, we know the consequences of gambling and the risks and the hazards that involve them and their families as well. We're well aware of that. And that was a part of the intense debate, obviously, before we started the, uh, the licensing of the two casinos that we currently have in our state. So my question is to you, Madam Chair, and I don't see this in, in the language here, or maybe if it is there, maybe you'll direct me to where it is, that what are we doing in terms of the necessary supportive things that we need to do when we give these extra licenses to those municipalities that are agreeable to have a casino in their backyard? Uh, so part of this bill, and I'm not certain that I'm going to be able to find it right this minute, uh, says that uh, part of the funds would go into um, a program for um, problem gambling. Madam, w Madam Chair, where are you? What, uh, Under the underlying bill. Madam Chair, I think it, believes it starts in Section 6, and line, starting at line 333 is where some of that information is. Thank you. I should have marked it because I knew that that was going to be a question. <laughs> so it says in there, um, in from 333 down, the Commissioner of Consumer Protection shall, within available resources, prepare and distribute inf informational materials uh, to inform the public of programs available for the prevention of problem gambling. There's more to it than that. There's a section here that actually says that they have to, that part of the proceeds have to go. It says, if you look at just the summary without the language of it, the MOU must provide that the tribes as a condition of licensure will continue, contribute annually a specified amount of money to the Connecticut Council on Problem Gambling. So they would provide the resources for problem gambling. They themselves. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, let's go back. I'll, I'll, I'll address both of those, you know, and I do appreciate your pointing me in where those lines are, and I would appreciate very much in the bill if also you could point out where the casinos, you know, are going to give an excellent, because the language is critical here. Because if you see in lines 335 to 343, my concern is those <coughs> three very operative words within available resources, and that bothers me. Because this is not, if, if, if we are going to be going ahead and giving permission for three casinos in our state and then let the Department of Consumer Protection do what they need to do as far as education is concerned, given the restraints of our budget, given the economical woes that we have in our state, I'm very concerned about the within available resources. And what we need to do, Madam Chair, if you're going to proceed with this further, I, I get it that this is work in progress. I'm well aware of that. And that's why I want to flag these certain things that are of concern to me as leadership discusses these various issues before we see the final version, both in the House as well as the Senate floor, that this cannot be within available resources. 
this is something that DCP w have to do, have to educate people. Because it is very easy, you know, for easy. And as once again, going back to what I said, you know, whether it be, whether it be alcohol, whether it be gambling or any of those things, we are all adults. We all make adult decisions. But at the same token, seeing the consequences of gambling, how it can impact families, how it can impact children. You know, I'm very concerned that we need to make sure that before we give the green light for further casinos to be in our state, that we ha are very, very clear as a legislative body what are the areas of tight control and not within available funds, not within available resources, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. I think if you looked on, on uh, lines 277 and 278, it does say a specified per, uh, percentage of gross operating revenues, but I would agree that it's not specific enough because I think you do need, um, you need the, actually what that specified percentage is in order to come up with a real dollar amount. So um, I, I personally have taken note of your concerns and uh, we'll be bringing them up on the uh, overall uh, amendment. Uh, and and I, you know, I also know that this is a work in progress, but I agree with you that we need to be more very specific on that dollar amount to provide the correct resources necessary. Thank you, Madam Chair, for listening to my concerns. And I, you know, at this moment today, I will be a no vote on this bill because just to flag those two concerns that I have. But as you said. You know, the leadership is going to be working on these bills moving forward. And if those issues are mine, it is not whether it's one, one extra casino we have in our state or two other casinos. You know, it is important, but ultimately it's a municipality that's going to decide what they're going to do with that. But my bigger concern is the consequences which we know exist because of gambling and how, how are we as a state both morally as well as financially going to address those issues because of what we have created by giving them this permission for these extra casinos. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you.